The new interface enhancements for 2016 forced me to rethink how I use alias. As such, what better way of getting us thinking outside the default interface than to use a completely new color scheme? I know many alias users customize their interface, which typically means shells, marking menus, hotkeys, and the placement of the interface windows. Looking closely at the interface changes over the last few releases, the interface can now become an integral part of the workflow of using alias. This presentation will walk through not only the interface enhancements for 2016, but also how you can use the interface to help you organize your workflows effectively. To start with, I use preference sets. Preference sets capture many things at the same time, including workspaces, shells, marking menus, and colors. To save a preference set, use export. To load an existing preference set, use import. I saved the default workspace previously, so let me load that preference set. To change user colors, go under Preferences, Interface, and select User Colors. It takes time to create a good color scheme. As you can see, there are many things to consider and change. Rather than having to use the scroll bar all the time or manually adjusting the window, there's a Fit Window to Contents button in the interface that expands the window. We provide a Sample Color Schemes folder and we'll use the dark color scheme for our video sequences. More than likely you've seen alias windows have a docking feature and has an arrow in the title block. The docking direction will change depending on whether you're at the top, right, bottom, or left sides. You can manually control the direction the window will collapse, and there's a new feature to lock the window collapse direction. As a quick reference, if you hold down the shift key while dragging the window to the edge, alias will dock the window into the frame. Transparency is new with this release. What is great about having transparent windows is that you can easily see the complete model with windows open. Then, when you move your mouse into the window, it becomes opaque. This is controlled in the Preferences Global Preference Interface area. A value of 0 makes the window totally transparent, which is not advised, and 1 makes them opaque. There is also a new window collapse action control in the preferences that allows you to switch from the default single click on the title bar to other options. The interface scale control is new and allows you to size the interface components. This is especially helpful when switching to ultra high definition displays and still being able to see your icons. Common tool window dimensions is also new with this release and is on by default. As an example, if I open the options for square and then select rail, two things happen. First, the options are displayed, and second, the option window has the same dimensions as the previous tool. When I go into a true side view, there's a new green square in the view cube that lets me know that I am in the true orthographic view. As I rotate, the center section of the view cube changes to gray, indicating that I'm back to a perspective view. Going back to a true side view, the center once again returns to green. 